But he says that the Lord is my rock. That's what David says. My fortress and my deliverer. The God of my rock. In him will I trust. He is my shield and my horn of my salvation. He's my high tower and my refuse, my savior. He saved me from violence. That when the enemy would try to destroy me, when the plan of the enemy was to try to consume me and kill me, the Lord saved me. <sighs> when, 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 when I was on my way to hell because of all the stuff I got, the Lord saved me. De de deliverance, deliverance. When, when I was about to lose my mind in the midst of what I was going through, the Lord saved me. And I just got this. Somebody ought to be glad tonight uh -huh, that God is able to put you in a position where he embarrassed the devil on your behalf. Ah. Uh, yeah, y'all. Some of you missed that tonight. Somebody touch your neighbor and say, "God's about to embarrass the devil on his ass." He thought he was going to take you out. He thought he was going to knock you off a track. He thought she was going to make you lose your mind. He thought she was going to put you up in the emergency room. But God is about to embarrass the devil on your behalf because God don't like to look crazy. And And then we see, watch this, we see that God himself, not only does he deliver, but watch this, he acts as a deliverer. <laughs> he, he does not, ah, oh, this feels good to me tonight. He does not assign deliverance to somebody else to deal. <laughs> God's that powerful <laughs> He got enough power to do his own stuff. Uh -huh. hey, somebody, the reality, he don't need your help. The problem with the saints today is we button in God's business. Uh -huh. And God's trying to get some stuff done. But every time God's trying to get some stuff done, we think we, we, we so powerful and we can handle it ourselves. And that's why you got to run back to the altar for the same thing week after week and month after month and year after year. And you're trying to figure out why you're not getting delivered. Every now and then you got to get out of God's way. And you got to step aside and let God handle it. Somebody touch your neighbor and say, let him handle his business. God himself acted as a deliverer. Uniquely and forcefully, he did it. He did it. We find an example of it. He did it in Exodus from Egypt. We'll go over there to Exodus, the third chapter. The seventh verse. He says, y'all there? And the Lord said, I will surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmaster for I know their sorrows and I am come down to deliver them that's what it says out of the hand of the Egyptian and to bring them up out of the land uh, unto a good land and a large Unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Prezizites and the Hittites and the Jebusites. And God tells them, he says, listen, I'm going to act as the deliverer myself. He says, I heard their cry. And I came to encourage somebody tonight that you think you've been crying. Your crying is in vain. But God says, I've heard you in the midnight hour. God said, I heard you when nobody else heard you. God said, I heard you when you think I didn't hear you. And he says that I'm able to come and act as a deliverer for myself. And when you know that you are the redeemed of the Lord, you can go through an affliction and still wear a smile. Because you know what the set word says about you. Matter of fact, uh, uh, the reason that some folks can't uh, get delivered is because they are too consumed by what others are saying about them. 
Uh, 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 can, I, can I help y'all for about two minutes here? Uh, it, it, it really doesn't matter what folks say about you. Uh, because God has the last word concerning your situation. Uh, uh, I, I done got to a point, I just got, uh, you know, I, done, I just turned, uh, Deacon Weir, I just turned 35 my last birthday. You know, so I I'm I'm guess I'm getting a little older now. I'm, I'm about five from 40. And, you know, I'm about five from 40. And so I just got to a place where I just don't care what folks say about me. I, I, when it comes to that, I just got to, I don't know about anybody else, but I just got an I don't care attitude. I done got to a place, Brother William, if you ain't paying my bills, if you ain't paying my cell phone bill, if you ain't paying my house bill, if you ain't paying my kids' child care bill, my cricket bill, my Boost Mobile bill, y'all ain't saying nothing. Uh -huh. it, it really don't matter what you say about me. Because watch this. When you are secure in your identity of who you are according to the word of God, then it doesn't matter what people say because you know who you are. And you know what the word says you are. So he says, listen, he says, I can go through the afflictions and still wear a smile and still give God the praise because I'm secure in who I am. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's why the Bible says in Psalms 107, familiar passage of scripture, it may be up on the screen, you don't have to turn there, but the Bible says in that second verse, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, who he have redeemed from the hand of the enemy. That if you've been redeemed, that's one of my favorite scriptures, if you have been redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and if you know that you're redeemed, you ought to open your mouth and just say who you are. Every now and then, you ought to walk around with your head up, chest stuck out, folks looking at you, talking about you better than everybody else. I said it before, it's not that I'm acting better, I'm just acting blessed. I'm just walking around because I know who I am in God. You may think I'm better, uh-huh, but I'm just acting blessed. I'm just walking in according to God, who God calls me. I'm the redeemed. And just as God heard the Israelites when they cried, he will also hear us. And not only will he hear us, but God will come and see about us. That when we learn how to operate in the word of God, then healing comes in our life. Salvation comes in our life. But the most important thing that we ought to be seeking for as believers is deliverance in our lives. Ah, the Lord just gave me this. Hold on. Here, here, here's a break. Here's a, here, here's a commercial. There should be sometimes you look in the mirror and there's some stuff about your own self that you don't like. There all of the time you look in the mirror and you say, God, listen, I'm not, I'm not talking about the outside appearance, but I'm talking about the stuff that's on the inside. That you say, God, listen, I need you to remove some of this out of me. And I need you to remove some of that out of me. And I need you to take some hatred out of me. Because there, yeah, yeah, there's some times, can, can we be honest and true? There's some times some of us walk around past people. We roll our eyes, suck our teeth. We don't even know why we mad. I mean, we just mad just to be mad. Y'all got some people like that in your life. That... You, they don't even know why they mad. You say, why are you mad at me? You don't even know why you're mad at me. You're just mad at me because you're mad at me. Some people mad at you just because they don't like the way you look. The way you walk. Y'all y'all acting like y'all ain't got people like that in your life. But there's some stuff on the inside of us that we ought to ask God to remove, to take out of us. That's the process of deliverance. But deliverance does not happen on our own power. Deliverance happens in the power of the word. Because when we allow the word to penetrate our hearts and we allow the word to penetrate our spirit, God is saying, listen, I'll come in and start breaking some of that stuff up. 
You came in with hatred, but you'll walk out with love because you, you know what my word says, that, that for God so loved the world that he gave his only, but God, you'll walk in weak, but you'll walk out strengthened because you know what the Bible says, that when we are weak, he is strong. You, 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 he'll start breaking some of that stuff up in us. That we can walk in the spirit of deliverance. It says to the Christians, those deliverance foreshadow the coming of Jesus Christ as our ultimate deliverer. The reason, the reason God has given us time and God has given us chance is because he's trying to remove as much out of us to prepare us. He's trying to take all the imperfections out of us to prepare us for a perfect place. Does that make sense tonight? Because we, we, I don't care how perfect you think we are, you are. We are imperfect. And what God is trying to do is he takes us through a process. And so, and so God understands how fragile we are. And so he, 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 don't, he don't do it all at one time. He takes a little bit out of you. Uh, and and so, so each year, you know, each opportunity that you, you, you grow and you stay in the word, he's taking more out of you. And he's taking this out of you and he's taking that out of you because he's trying to prepare us. He's trying to prepare an imperfect person for a perfect place. That our redemption in Christ was completed at the cross of Calvary. And we have to believe it. And it's essential for us to walk in. And again, the Bible says, let the redeem of the Lord say so. That when you have been redeemed from the hand of the enemy, when you have been delivered from the snare of the enemy, when God has snatched you, and, and all of us in here can attest to the fact that God has snatched us out of something. Uh -huh. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what he snatched you out of, but he snatched you out of something. He he snatched you from a deathbed. He snatched you from an accident. He snatched you from losing your mind. He snatched you from making bad decisions, and he's delivered you. And God says, now that you have walked in the spirit of the deliverance, you got to open your mouth because there's others that are connected to you. You got you got folks in your own family. That need deliverance. You know, the, you know Pookie that come over the house and I always ask him for money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He need deliverance to find a job. And some stuff, watch this. Watch this. And, 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 and this is, y'all ain't getting no hoop tonight because it's too hot. This is it, Sister Hunt. You don't never have to be embarrassed about what you need deliverance from. They never got to be bad. <laughs> they, tell, they, they, they tell folks, uh, the Dr. Dawson, they say uh, the, the, the first, uh, if you're in the 12-step program, the first thing to a 12-step program is, is admitting that you got a problem. Uh, only one that don't follow that rule is church. Because we come in, act like we ain't got no problems. Ain't nothing wrong. Don't, 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 don't uh, uh, I ain't coming to the altar because ain't nothing wrong with me. And if I do come to the altar, folks are going to think something wrong with me. And so, and so when, when worship is high, Sister Alva, when, 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 when God is in the place, we miss our period of deliverance because we worried about what other folks think. And so we sit like this in worship. We cross our legs and fold our arms <laughs> because we don't want people to think anything going on with us. Well, listen, I'd rather come into worship and give God my all and put my all at the altar. Uh -huh. That's what we sing. Is your all at the altar? Is that right, sister? Yeah. We, we sing, is your all at the altar? We, uh, we ought to come in and put our all at the altar so we can leave out free. Leave out delivered. Leave out out of bondage. 
Because that's the place, that's what church is. If church is supposed to be a hospital and you to come in and there's no, you, you, don't, you don't leave out feeling better than you came, something wrong. I don't want to go to a hospital where I go in the hospital and leave out worse than I came in. We got a hospital over in Philly like that. It's called Killer Cordia. <laughs> Brother Rod, you come in there, you leave out worse than you came in. <laughs> I don't want to come into the hospital and leave out the hospital worse than I came in, especially when I'm in the midst of all this word. But watch this. The medicine will never work unless you take it. Unless you follow the doctor's instructions, you'll, 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 you'll still be sick. And, and so I, I leave you tonight to tell you, every Sunday and every Wednesday night, you get the doctor's instructions. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You, you, you get, you, you, uh, 38 years, 38 years plus of bishop preaching through this pulpit, you got 66 books plus. And you, you got enough word on the inside of you that can heal you from whatever disease, whatever sickness, whatever problem that you're going through. And God's saying, it's the question is, is you going to take my instructions? Uh -huh. if you, are you going to follow the prescription? And, and God said, if you just follow the prescription, you'll, you'll leave out healed. And if you follow the pres prescription, you'll leave out delivered. If you follow the prescription, you'll leave out set free. I want to know. Is there anybody here tonight that says, listen, I'm just following the prescription because I got some stuff on the inside of me that I need God to make better. I got family that I need God to mend. And I, 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 I got finances that I need God to take, to straighten out. And so all I'm going to do is follow the instructions.